Originally cast out of a captured Russian cannon from the Crimean War, the Victoria Cross is the highest and most prestigious award of the British honour system. Since its creation in 1856, there's been 1,358 Victoria Crosses awarded, and the first one was awarded to an Irishman by the name of Charles Davis Lucas from Points Pass in County Armagh. On the 21st of June 1854, during the Crimean War, while serving as a midshipsman on the HMS Helga, a live Russian shell with a fuse still hissing landed on the deck of the ship, and when the officers on board said, hit the deck, Charles Davis Lucas coolly walked over and lifted the shell, throwing it overboard with the shell impacting on the water. He would save the lives of every man on that transport. And because of his bravery, he was awarded the Victoria Cross and would eventually rise to the rank of a rear admiral. Now, within the grounds of Belfast City Cemetery, there are two Victoria Cross recipients. And here we are at the grave of the first one, Valentine Mumby McMaster. Valentine Mumby McMaster was born in India in 1834. Mumby was an assistant surgeon of the 78th Seaforth Highlanders, and the reason why he was awarded the Victoria Cross was for his actions on the 25th of September 1857 during the Indian uprising at Lucknow, which had been under siege for 92 days, where he saved the lives of dozens and dozens of soldiers. Now, he didn't live very long. He passed away in January 1872 at the age of 37. He died as a result of a lung infection and he had a full military funeral. And if you can imagine here in January 1872, leading the procession was the muffled drums of the Anthem Rifles and it was a firing party with arms reversed, 100 strong and 4 deep. His remains were carried on a gun carriage drawn by four horses and on the lid of his coffin were his regimental colours, sword, spur and bonnet. The pallbearers were six senior officers of the 78th in full uniform and his horse was draped in black, followed his remains. Now, Belfast City Cemetery is another Victoria Cross winner and his name was Private Bernard McCourt, or McCourt a native of Donnacloney just outside Lurgan, also in County Armagh. And he was a soldier of the 95th Regiment of the Sherwood Foresters and he was awarded the Victoria Cross for his actions on the 6th of January 1858 during also the Indian Uprising at the Siege of Roa when he suffered a number of sabre and musket ball wounds. He passed away at the relative young age of 50 as a labourer from his home in 72 Ernie Street on the Shanga Road and he's believed to be buried with his Victoria Cross but he's buried in poor ground. There were only two Victoria Cross winners who actually came from Belfast. A private Patrick Carland, a Crimean veteran and he was awarded the VC for his actions also during the Indian Uprising and he's believed to be buried in Friars Bush Graveyard just on the other side of Belfast. Now this being the 75th anniversary of the ending of World War II, it's only right that I talk about this young handsome man here. He was called James Joseph McGuinness. James McGuinness was born on the 27th of October 1919 at 4 Mallorca Street on the Gravener Road to Scotch and Maisie McGuinness. He was one of five siblings. James attended St Finian School on the Falls Road where he was taught by the De La Salle brothers. Growing up, James would have played in the swings and slides at the Dunfall Park and he also would have played around the back streets and alleyways around the Gravener Road. As he grew up, James spent his time in the bog meadows with his faithful companion, a Kerry Blue dog by the name of Prince. And at the weekends, he would have roamed the sleeve through the Black Mountain, rambling over to the Cave Hill, home in time for his dinner. James was a quiet child at school and he wasn't a very sporty person, but one thing he did excel at, he was a tremendous swimmer, a real water baby, spent as much time as possible swimming in the Falls Road baths. Sometime in the late 1920s, James's father, Sketch, a musician, would leave the family for Scotland, never return, and leave Maisie to rear five children on her own. Now, Belfast in the 1920s and 1930s had mass unemployment, and Maisie struggled to bring money home, often working long hours in the night as a seamstress so the children would have some food on the table in the morning and at one stage with no, no money at all she had to put her children temporarily in the car in Nazareth House Orphanage on the Ormo Road and with the constant struggle for food and no permanent work for a young boy from West Belfast James enlisted in the British Royal Navy in June 1935 as a boy seaman, initially training on the HMS Ganges, a training vessel based at Shatley in Suffolk, England. In 1936, James got his sea legs and left HMS Ganges as a first class boy seaman with his Navy nickname, Mick McGuinness, serving on the warship, the HMS Sovereign. 
At the outbreak of World War II, James would play his part in the fight against fascism. For two years, he served on the HMS Kandahar and was on board when she struck a main east of Tripoli, Libya, on the 19th of December 1941. Kandahar was scuttled the next day by the destroyer Jaguar. 73 men went down with the ship. In December 1942, James joined the submarine branch and in March 1943 volunteered for special and hazardous duties as a frogman on a new midget submarine called the Axecraft. James was there when the Axecraft were first used in September 1943 in the sinking of the German battleship Turbots in a Norwegian fjord. James was later mentioned in British naval dispatches for his bravery and devotion to duty. But the reason why James McGuinness was awarded the Victoria Cross was for his actions in an operation called Operation Struggle at the tail end of the Second World War in July 1945. Under the command of Ad Admiral Fife of the US Navy on the 30th of July, just off the Johor Straits, James along with Lieutenant Ian Fraser and two other men jumped into an axe craft called the XE-3 and slipped away from the parent submarine, the HMS Stegen. Their target was a 10,000 ton Japanese anti-aircraft heavy cruiser by the name of Takeo, which was berthed just off Singapore Island. At 7am on the 31st of July, after sailing 40 hazardous smells, avoiding sea mains and listening posts, the axe craft approached the Takeo from underneath. James got out of the axe-craft in his frogman suit and as he did he noticed that the bottom of the ship had barnacles and razor sharp shells and in order to attach the bombs that limpet mains he needed to scrape these away and as he did they cut into his hands in his frogman suit. Now lesser man would have been content with planting a couple of limpet mains but not this Belfast boy. With the help of a rope he attached the main after main along the bottom of the cruiser but as James got back into the axe-craft the limpet mains wouldn't jettison. He had to get out of the axe-craft once again and after seven nerve-wracking minutes with a leaking air apparatus and in complete darkness with a heavy spanner avoiding enemy attack detection from above he succeeded in releasing the limpet mains which then with as he blew a 60 feet by 30 feet hole in the decay putting her guns out of action. And because of his bravery, leading seaman James McGuinness, along with Lieutenant Ian Fraser, were awarded the Victoria Cross at Buckingham Palace in December 1945. And after the award ceremony, over 10 sandwiches, James was asked by King George VI, where did you learn to swim and hold your breath? He says, I saved up all my pennies all week long so I could go swimming in the Falls Road baths. Now, when James came back to Belfast on a three-day visit in Christmas 1945, he was somewhat of a celebrity. Outside his mother's house, now on Ebor Street in the Donegal Road, with TV crews and hundreds of people outside his house, his sister Rosemary came out of the house and says, Oh, Jim, he's not coming out until he gets his dinner. Now, take yourselves off. Unfortunately, controversy was to follow. Unlike other Victoria Cross winners who were usually awarded the freedom of their towns or cities, James McGuinness wasn't. The Lord Mayor of Belfast at the time, Sir Crawford McCullough, refused to give him the freedom of the city of Belfast. The reasons lay in difference of class and creed. James was a young Catholic from the inner slums of Belfast and his face did not fit the image of the Ulster war effort. In his wisdom, Sir Crawford McCullough, along with his fellow cohorts, decided to raise a shilling fund for the Victoria Cross winner, thinking he would only get a couple of pounds. Boy, did that backfire. In a brief show of Catholic and Protestant unity, they raised over £3,000, over £100,000 in our money today, to give to their war hero. How embarrassed McCullough must have been with people with little money off the war and him with thousands of pounds in his coffers. In 1946, James married a Barnsley woman by the name of Edna Skidmore. Still in the Navy, they both settled down in Portsmouth, England, and they had four sons. And life was going along swimmingly. And at this stage, with being a Victoria Cross winner, you would think he would quickly go up the ranks of the British Royal Navy, maybe be given the command of his own ship, or like Charles Davis Lucas, become an admiral. Sadly, this was not to be. James and Edna returned to Belfast in 1949, and then, by then, nearly all the shilling fund money was gone. James was a very generous person. He gave money away to family and friends, as well as to total strangers, and he came back to Belfast at a change. The euphoria of the end of the war had evaporated. Attitudes had hardened, and Belfast had become more polarised. James struggled to find work. By 1952, in poor health from the loss of his son David in a road accident, 
James had no choice but to sell his Victoria Cross on a private deal for pittance, a mere £75. He would eventually get his VC back, but not before the press got wind of it. The same press who welcomed him a number of years ago earlier, along with the establishment, vilified him in the newspapers and made sure that the whole world knew about it. His wife Edna was asked, what happened with the money? And she was quoted as a saying, we were simple people thrust into a lemonade. We lived beyond our own means because it seemed to be the right thing to do. When James was asked, why did you sell your Victoria Cross? He says, you can't eat a Victoria Cross. I have a young family and I have to put food on the table. In Belfast, he was doomed by judgment. The judgment of a nationalist community that did not want a British war hero in its midst. And the judgment of unionists who were on prepared to honour a Catholic war hero. So humiliated and treated as a pariah, James left Belfast in February 1955, settling in Rossington, Yorkshire, England. Here he found a job as an electrician working down a colliery. This was a bit of a relief as he found the comradeship of the Yorkshire miners very much akin to his early experiences in the submarine service. And it was here he was quite content on being that quiet, quiet Irishman from Belfast. But by the age of 50 in 1869, he was made redundant and he was forced to claim unemployment benefits where he received roughly £12 a week. For the last years of his life, he suffered from chronic health problems until he passed away on the 12th of February 1986 in poverty and obscurity. He was later cremated. Over 50 years later, after James McGuinness was awarded the Victoria Cross, he was finally honoured when on the 8th of October 1989, a permanent bronze stone memorial was unveiled on the grounds of Belfast City Hall. Ian Fraser, his commanding officer on the X-Craft and Victoria Cross recipient said, I never met a braver man. It was a privilege to know him. And it's wonderful to see Belfast honour him at last.